What's up carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke and today we're doing a delicious crawfish boil. I'm doing it with my friend and neighbor and local legend as far as crawfish bowls are concerned, Jonathan. He's got it figured out and so he's going to show us how to do this today. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about your crawfish cooking history. I guess it all started uh, with family that was from Louisiana, kind of picked up off of them and kind of tweaked some things how I like it. You know, when you like them this much and you want to eat them all the time, you need to learn how to cook them. Well, you know it all comes from Louisiana, knowing that that's where his roots come from. You know they're going to be good. Let's get into this video and see how we did it. All right, so phase one of this process is to get the crawfish out of the bag. These have been in this cooler overnight, not frozen, but refrigerated, just a little bit of ice in there with them that keeps them alive and uh, keeps them fresh. We're gonna get them out of the bag. And then the next process is, is uh, there's a reason they call these things mud bugs. And that's because they live in the mud and therefore they're full of it. This is something that Jonathan's built. Now you can go somewhere like Academy or online and you can buy one of these for like 70 bucks. But Jonathan says he built this What'd you say it called? Got about $12 in it now, from the PVC fittings to the bucket that I bought at Tractor Supply. It's not a whole lot of anything in it. So if you are a money conscious person, you want one of these, you can put one together yourself pretty easily. We're just gonna dump these big boys into this water. Ooh, them are some pretty crawfish, baby. Look how big those things are, good Lord. We're gonna be eating good in the neighborhood. So we're just gonna let that fill up and what you'll see is that the water will start to get real dingy. And then the longer that this thing runs and that water kind of pours out the sides, the clearer it's gonna get. And so we're gonna let these purge for, how long do you think? 15, 20 minutes, it'll start clearing up. Like you said, it's, it's real easy to tell because your water will be running clear. All right, so a little bit of purge time. We're getting our bowl ready in the meantime. So we're having a little look at these and Jonathan was kind of telling us about what he's noticing about the, the, the level of dirtiness with them. On a uh, crawfish, one of the big telltale signs as to your quality of crawfish when you get them. If they're already been cleaned pretty well, which these have, I mean, we hardly have any soak time on them already and they're already clean. Normally, you would see a lot of mud built up and all the cracks and crevices, but these are already looking really clean, so these probably won't take that long to purge at all. Yeah, and there's almost no grass or anything in there too, and that's kind of a sign to look for. If you've got a lot of grass and visible dirt in there, you're gonna need to do a good purge. And something we were talking about uh, off camera a while ago is, you know, to do the salt purge. And what Jonathan was saying was that, you know, these are not salt water animals. So with them not being salt water animals, if you put salt on them, they're not cleaning up anymore. They're not like throwing up or cleaning their bodies out, but it will kill them. And say you have a, you know, 100, 150 pounds of crawfish that you're purging. When it comes time to cook them, you're only gonna be able to cook 20, 30, 40 pounds at a time. So then you just have a big pot of dead crawfish that's just sitting and getting hot. And that's a good way to make somebody sick and to give you some pretty bad tasting crawfish. So this is the best way we found so far. Uh, it works pretty good for me. I had a lot of other people start doing it. To me, it just gives you a better, cleaner tasting crawfish. Every batch I've ever had that he was in charge of, super clean, super tasty. And when it comes to crustaceans or anything from the water, fresh is always best. Okay, so we've got our crawfish purging. They're almost done. Now it's time to prep the pot. We've got it filled up about three quarters of the way with hose water. And now what you wanna do while the water's still cold is we're gonna add in a five pound or four and a half pound bag of Louisiana crawfish bowl. I had some slap your mama crawfish bowl and Jonathan said he's had that before. And it comes out a little bit salty for his taste. And I've had his crawfish and they're just delicious. So we went and we got some of this because that's what he uses and that's what we're going to use this video today. But you can make that call yourself if you prefer things to be a little bit more salty. By all means, you know, go for it. We're going to dump this whole thing over into the pot. They say them crawfish is too spicy. I say they supposed to be spicy. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fire it up and get it to a rolling ball. Work that seasoning into that water. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we've got the water going at a rolling bowl, and it's time to get started. Jonathan's gonna kind of break down what we're doing. So first off, once you get your water to a rolling bowl, first things you wanna do is add your potatoes and your sausage. They take a little bit longer to cook, therefore they need to go in before the crawfish to get tender and soak up some of the spices. After these cook, we'll throw in the crawfish for our next step. 
Once we put in the crawfish, we'll throw in the things that add the seasoning, like the garlic, the lemons, and the onion. Then once all that cooks and your crawfish boils for about six to seven minutes, you'll kill the heat. And when it's time to do the soak, that's when we add our mushrooms and some of the frozen corn to try to kill the heat on the boil. Let's go ahead and get this stuff into the pot. All right. So the potatoes take the longest to cook and the sausage is gonna take on the most flavor of anything. It's also Cajun sausage. So we wanna get all of that in there first, let it cook, let the potatoes get tender, let the sausage get soaked up. Then it's time to crawfish, baby. All right, we'll drop that down in there for about three minutes. And then it's time for crawfish. We're at the three minute mark. We're gonna go ahead and pull the lid now. Make sure you've got some protective gloves if you're gonna handle this sort of thing. I know that I shouldn't have to say that, but kinda of do sometimes. So we're gonna go in with about two thirds of this batch, about 20 pounds. This is a 31 pound bag. That ought to be pretty close right there, I think. All right, let's get in and have a look at them. They look real excited. All right, guys. We'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add in on top of those crawfish is the onion, about four lemons halved, and about three cloves of garlic. Now Jonathan is gonna be squeezing the juice out of these lemons before he drops them over in there, just to get that citrus note on those crawfish. It does survive, it does make it. We got a lot of garlic going in. We'll drop them into the pot, set the timer for how long? So we'll drop the pot, and as soon as we get it back to a rolling bowl, we'll set our timer for six minutes. Engage. <laughs> it ain't gonna take long. Uh, it won't take long at all. Alright, it's time. We've hit the six minute mark and we're gonna go ahead and cut the gas to the pot. Is it this time that we're gonna go ahead and get this corn and mushrooms in with the crawfish and kill the bull? So once you've got all that in there, just kind of mash it around, get that cold corn worked down into there. And Jonathan's gonna tell us a little bit about what to expect. As you can see right now, after they're done boiling, everything's kind of float to the top. But adding this corn in here and then just killing the fire will let everything kind of cool back off. And what we're shooting for is to set a timer for about 25 minutes. You can go a little bit longer if you want them a little bit spicier. What you'll notice is after 25 minutes, your crawfish will have sunk down. They, they take on all the water and as much spice as they're going to and they'll all settle at the bottom and you know when that happens that's time to pull them. Alright so we're just going to get the lid back on here let that corn cool it down you can see it instantly killed the boil and we'll be back in about 25 to 30 minutes to get them out of the water and onto the table and then we're going to have some spicy lips baby. Alright so it's finally time the crawfish have been soaking in that delicious Louisiana flavor for 25 minutes now. The smell is incredible. The thing about Jonathan's method is that it's not super complicated. It does not require a ton of steps or a secret sauce, if you will. It's more about having enough seasoning in the pot and timing. Timing is so critical when you're cooking crawfish and he's got it down to an art. Man, does that not look pretty. They're cooked. We turned them into food. Okay, come see the other call. Okay. This is the uh, mild batch. Y'all know me. Y'all know that I want a spicy batch. But for right now, it's eating time. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and crack into these things and uh, then we'll be getting started on the second batch. <laughs> Perfect pull out. <laughs> Dear Lord, that's so good. Look, I'm telling y'all, the method that Jonathan uses the texture pulls clean out, squeaky, but not too raw feeling, not dry. If you eat crawfish like I do, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you get them and they're just, the texture is just too done or not done enough. Stick to this timing and I can promise you, your crawfish are gonna be fire. <laughs> okay, so we've been chowing down on crawfish for about 20 minutes now and the taste buds are thoroughly seasoned and ready for more. We're gonna add just a little bit more heat to this, which it did not need much. 
cooking it on this 60 quart loco cooker. We're gonna go ahead and spice it up just for fun. We got about 10 more pounds we're gonna cook. So let's go ahead, get a little bit of the liquid in here, which Jonathan says really amps up the heat. We're about to put a cap in these crawfish. Now, we are about to put a cap in here. It says, a, uh, I think it says a teaspoon, a tablespoon per five pounds. And since we've already got the uh, dry seasoning dumped in there, I'm just gonna add a cap full, just to take it up a notch, just to where my lips go numb. So that's in there. We're gonna go ahead and get the crawfish in there now. Jonathan got to do this last time. I wanted to do it this time. Nothing going in here but crawfish this time. So the last 10 pounds, the extra spicy batch is done. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kill this gas. We're gonna dump some ice. We've got tons of corn from the first batch. So we had a little bit of a catastrophe. Uh, one of the kids fell out of the hammock. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and kill the bowl on there. Get that ice in there. We're gonna get it stirred up. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back when we try these hot crawfish out. Man, the color on those things is epic. So I wanted to just try one of these extra spicy ones to uh, let y'all know how they turned out. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I think that that's gonna build up really good on the lips. Those of you that <laughs> eat crawfish, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, the more you eat, the more you sweat. As far as the methodology is concerned, it pulls out perfect every time. Perfect texture on these crawfish. Thank y'all so much for watching. Come over to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. We'll see y'all in there. Smoke on, and I'll see y'all in the next video.